We're here at the Auburn Housing Authority meeting for November 30th. Could we all please stand? Aye. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> okay, we're, we'll start off discussion and vote. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> Approve the minutes for June 6, 2022, and June 13, 2022. Do I have a motion? Yes, sir. I have a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, uh, discussion and vote to approve the minutes for September 12th, 2022. Do I have a motion? I motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I abstain. I was not at the meeting. Okay, one abstain. Discussion and vote to approve the uh, check registers for June, July, August, September, October, and November 2022. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, executive Director's Report. Okay. You're on. First thing I want to talk about is the fact that we had a HUD inspection this Friday for our federal properties. They haven't been here for three years because if you score high, you get extra money and they don't see you for three years. So we did real well on our last inspection. So now the three years have passed, we've had COVID in the midst of it, and now they're coming Friday at eight o'clock. We've done the best that we could in the amount of time. They give you like two weeks notice and you just, that's what it is. So we're hoping that we do well. I'm not expecting us to do great because of the time constraints, people having to take vacation because of our other concerns with the vacation time. But everything we possibly could have done has been done. We have some residents that are under um, court action, and we're gonna hope that we can get them not to go in their apartments because they would, may have caused a problem in the apartment that we would get points taken off out of whatever. So they're coming Friday morning at eight o'clock We'll go over the apartments. We don't know until they come that morning. It's only a portion of the apartments that they view. Mm -hmm. They pick the apartments while they're here, so we do not know which apartments are gonna get picked. So it's a kind of a crapshoot, really. But we'll do the best we can and hope for the best. So that's Friday, but we've been very consumed with that. We've also had three AUPs this year because of COVID. The state looked at 2019, 2020, and 2021. So there's been, it's a lot of work. They ask for a lot of documents. They're very thorough, I think. And we're waiting here about the last, last one. We haven't received the results of that yet, but we had that going on this year to catch up with the COVID years where they didn't come. Then, as far as the vacation time, I signed an agreement that I would use my vacation time so that I would be in compliance with the policy. And I signed an agreement with the board and the state. So, anybody, anybody wonders where I've been? This is what it is. Yep. So we're going to turn this into the state. That's where we're at. I got a lot of time to use. So if anybody's 
been wondering where's Larry? Well, check me. <laughs> She's gone. And usually when I am out of the office, I am still reachable by phone. And I could actually be here, but just using the time because I didn't want to. So as of right now, Lari has one week and 8.5 hours left for vacation. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. So I'm well below the eight weeks I can keep, but while you're using the time, you're also gaining the time. So I'm going to make sure that I never run into this issue again. And because it is an issue because if I were to retire, and I had all that time, the housing authority would be responsible for paying me those vacation hours at my rate, rate today, as opposed to not necessarily when I earned the time. So it is a significant problem carrying that kind of time. But for years, I wasn't in a position to actually take the time, and that's why it built up as much as it did. But we are in compliance now, and the sick time isn't an issue because they only pay you a portion of the sick time. Do you know what I mean? It's only like 20% of the sick time, and I'm not anxious to burn that sick time because I'm not the healthiest person on the planet, and if I were to get sick, I'm going to need the time. You know, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, I am going to try to bring this down. Frank still has time that he has to take, but because of these inspections, he's going to continue to take time off after we get through Friday. Then he's going to be in a position where he can take time. But because of our staff, we don't have a lot of staff, but yet we have a lot of properties. So Frank is going to continue to get his time down, and then they can carry eight weeks. That's what the personnel policy says, but no more than that. So the staff is going to be on a rotating basis as far as taking the time so that we're in compliance completely with our personnel policy. But I just wanted to let you know that as of right now, this is where we stand. But we've taken as much time as we possibly could without causing a problem for the housing authority. Okay? One of our residents had asked for additional washing machines and dryers, like wanted, and I had presented that at one of the last board meetings that we had and didn't meet in October. But Maureen has been good enough to call housing authorities, and she's going to tell you what they told her. Well, I called approximately six other housing authorities, and we are indeed in compliance. We have more than some of the housing authorities with more people we have more machines than they have. So no need to worry. So based upon that, and we're just letting you know, we have what we should have, and we don't need to be adding any more, because it's going to be drama if we do. Right. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's in response. And we'll make a note to let the resident that offered it out that this is what we found, and this is what we're gonna, we're gonna stick with what we have, okay? And as, as long as they're working, we're in good shape. We rent the machines from automatic washing machine, and they're usually pretty good about coming out when, you know, when there is a problem. Like if they put a Canadian coin or something in, they could jam the, they could jam the machine. Mm -hmm. But if we ever have any problems with those machines, they come right out to fix them. So that's going to be the end of the washing machine crisis. Now, just before Thanksgiving, we got a, we got a lovely letter from the state regarding CHAMP technical assistance. CHAMP is the system that the state put in place to kind of control the waiting list, the whole how we house tenants, the whole there. But CHAMP has been Betty's project since the inception of, in 2019, and she's going to explain to you what's going on 
with this. I just, I just want to let you know that I'm not happy with the letter. They didn't call to verify if any of this stuff was true. This was based upon a report that was done in March. We're now going into December, and it's like, where have these people been? And they had no idea what it is we've actually done with CHAMP, and they didn't care to even bother to call us before they sent the board members a letter, which is pretty damn sketchy. Just saying. I agree. Okay. So I Betty's agree been, also. Yep, it, it was very unfair. But you know what? When you're working from home, you really don't care what's going on anywhere else. You're just trying to justify your job. So Betty, you're on. Okay. <clears throat> so Champ, um, let's see, was put in, <coughs> in October 18th was when they first started it. And there were problems galore from the beginning till till now. I mean, there's constant changes going on. You're constantly getting emails saying, okay, now we're going to do it this way, not the other way, etc. Um, we found out um, that a lot of our applications we had to draw did not merge when they did the merge. We didn't find this out until at least a year, maybe more, uh, after the system went out. Online, so we had to figure out how how, how we're going to get them in the system. Um, so we have sent letters to everyone. We've gotten people back. We've taken them off the list. Um, we've entered people that should be entered. We've done everything that we could do, um, and there are still issues with with Jim. But we're working with um, Joel and uh, Beth are the two people that help all the housing authorities with CHAMP. And um, so we, I, we sent a copy of the letter to them, and they said, the response back was, well, this is just a, a letter that they sent everybody who had a finding in their PMR, which is like a performance management review. review. Right. So they did a review of CHAMP, and they came up with findings where people were deficient, not doing what they wanted. And so, so uh, that was the letter, of course, as you saw, it was dated in March. This is November that they're sending this letter out. And they never sent one to Laurie and never contacted Laurie to say, hey, you have issues. Here, he could have explained to this Ben Stone um, What's been done? He has no idea what we've even been doing. Um, the people that know what we're doing is Evelyn, our representative from DHCD, Joel and Beth, and they're trying to help us. So um, Beth today sent me a, um, she looked back at our PMR, and there was only one thing on the PMR that uh, came up, something other than perfect, and that was getting CHAMP to work properly <laughs> for us. That was the only, everything else was perfect. That was the only thing that came up. So she's going to make an appointment with us. We're going to go over now what our next steps are, and it will be fine. But in this letter, they're okay. saying they want us to work with CyberSense. Nope. Joel and Beth are CyberSense. Oh, We've I been mean working with them all along. So that's why she's like, this was just a standard letter. But we know that we've had problems with this. So what it actually means is when they put the system in place, they wanted all the housing authorities to be on the same waiting list. Do you know what I mean? You know yeah. what I mean? Just one waiting list. But our old waiting list where people have applied since forever, still had people in the draw that didn't get merged with their list. So it wasn't fair to all these people that had been waiting for years to get in here to right. not be on that list. Well, we had to identify who didn't get put on and, and what happened. But that wasn't anything we did. That was involving the merge. So we have since gone through all our draws sent out, contacted all the people. A lot of them have been housed somewhere else. 
So that was fine, we could take them off. But we had a lot more people than I expected that still wanted to stay on the list. So now we're in the process of figuring out exactly who needs to be there and you know, comparing the two lists. And then the cyber sense is gonna to have to go back in and, and input all the people from our old list and put them on the, the champ new list. That's a lot of work. So then in the meantime, you've got all this stuff going on. We've had Albany has taken trainings with the CyberSense this fall to learn how to input, take people out, how to control the list. So we have had training going on. These people aren't aware of that. We've been working with CyberSense. Joel and Betty are like best friends. I mean, he, they are, those people are so helpful. They'll do whatever you need, but you have to have the information ready in order for them to get it. So we've been working with these people for months and everybody is aware that we've had problems with this. So when it came to housing people, we would look back at our old list and hope that they were on the champ list and that's how we went and housed people. You know, so if they want to come in and look, I'm per perfectly open to that. But everybody's known about this that this has been a problem since day one. And now all of a sudden, the review was done in March, and the earliest they could get to it was the day before Thanksgiving. Really? Who's kidding who? And if this was just a standard letter that went out because it was like Champ Auburn, and that's what kind of gave me the idea that it could in fact be a standard letter, but verify before you put it to paper that what you are saying is the truth. And to turn around and not ask me about it first, and to just go right to the board, I think is low rent. And that's, that's the chance. If you have any questions, I mean, we can certainly send up them a letter back, Definitely. you know, that this wasn't right. And we I'm have sure. worked with the people that they've identified on this, and We'll continue moving forward, but they can feel free to come out here. They can give us all the assistance that they want. Well, right? maybe, yeah. maybe it's time to um, Mr. Stone to get evaluated yeah. on what he's doing with his practice and the way they're handling it. Because if they're sending out letters, and the government has, I know this for a fact, they send out letters like this and not even, they don't mean anything, but they need to make their position look like it's worth the position. So what they do is they use us as people and boards and to make us look bad. And and all it is is them trying to justify themselves. Yep. And, and you know, they try to ruin people and it's not right. Like I said, he should be evaluated and in the department. If anybody looked into this, they would have known. If they called you and talked to you about this issue, they would have known. But no, they didn't. But you know what we can do? We can write a response, and the board can vote on it at our next meeting, and just say that we have addressed this at this meeting, and we went through the issues. We're going to give you a copy of the PMI report that Betty got from Beth this morning. We're going to have a conversation with Joel. We're going to target specific things that we're going to do and that we have been doing to address what they're saying here because we do know that there's a problem. But we weren't involved with the migration. They've got people listed as local that live in Pick Chicopee, whatever. They're not local. Local is harbor. Right. So not even that was done properly. Even though they had the information, there was a a glitch in the system, we were unfortunately targeted somehow, not targeted, but you know, what, you know what I mean, we were identified and we had significant issues. So at our next meeting, we're going to come up with a response to this. And the board's going to vote on whether we should send it, if you want any corrections made to it, that 
that we're going to send them back. We're not going to be rolling over, especially when we know what they're accusing of, us of, me, right. and well, the housing gonna... authority, That's right. has a problem. Yeah. I, have, I mean, I'd be the first one to say, if we're doing something wrong, okay, fine. But you know what? It was never our intent. And we need to let this guy know, hey, listen. You're not going to push us around. Don't be sending us a standard letter getting everybody all worked up saying, what the hell's going on? Here I am telling everybody we're doing okay. Well, we are doing okay. And then you get this and it's like, this happened in March. Call and find out if we've done anything to address these things before you send out your freaking standard letter. Excuse my French. That's all right. Through the chair. I would like to, I, I, I like what you're saying that we're going to do and that you have been doing right along. We've all worked very well together. The board and the office, the people in the office have been fantastic and so has, sorry, I have this problem with speech right now. Me. With Lori, yes, Lori. And I, I, I want to commend everybody because you've all worked very, very hard all through this time with COVID. We know you're doing the very best that you can, and if you find something wrong, you let us know and you correct it. And I appreciate it very much, and I'm sure the other members of the board can speak for themselves. Thank you very much. Okay, so we're going to come up with a letter in response to what they're saying. We'll provide any documents that we have to that report, and then we'll go forward with that. And if they want to come out, what's stopping you? Yeah, but be, be as polite as they were. Well, we're going to be professional. Yes. We're going to be professional Absolutely. in what our response is. I, don't, I felt this was uncalled for. Yep. And I have no problem saying that in a nice no way. You can put yes. that in the letter. Yeah. And upset it for nothing, for no reason. Upsetting the board, upsetting you. Um, that was uncalled for, absolutely. And that's what should be put in a letter. Yes. I mean, for something that happened in March. And that too. And, and this, this is the other thing. So we're going to come up with a response to this. Welcome them. Yes. Any assistance you can give us, we're happy to have it because we want to be in compliant too. You know, we just want everything the way it's supposed to be. So that's what we're going to do about that. That's good. Now, as far as the community rooms go, the community rooms are open. The kitchens are not open. We are not serve safe certified at this point. It expired during, during COVID. We do not intend to have any parties where we would use the kitchen at all. The, um, they can use the room itself Anything they bring in, they need to take home with them. Yes. They were leaving stuff. They called Wayne because the kitchen was locked, but they had left like bag, grocery bags full of like coffee and potato chips and all the, their personal things. We can't have that. We have nobody that's going to monitor the community rooms. And we, I mean, somebody could come in and just steal their stuff. And it's like, shame on you for leaving it. Because the bottom line is, we want them to be able to use it. We want it, them to be safe, but it's independent living. And the community room is independent too. So if they bring people in from the public to have card games, whatever, they're responsible for their guests. And if that guest should happen to test positive, we have no control because we can't ask anybody whether they have it or not. Like even with the inspection, we have residents that are calling us to tell us they have tested positive, which is a good thing because how else would we know? HIPAA prevents us from asking anybody. We don't know who's been vaccinated. So when residents invite people on the property for, the, for card games, little social things, that's all well and good, but they're using it at their own risk because HIPAA doesn't allow us to question these people, but yet the state insists that we be open. And that's okay, but the state insisted. It would, was not my first choice to open because we're still getting, pe getting people that are testing positive. Mm -hmm. 
Do you know what I mean? So people go and they are under the assumption that they're going to be all set. We can't require them to wear a mask. You know, we can't require them to wash their hands. So do I think it's a good situation? No, I would clean off my kitchen table and have people come over and play cards in your own home. Yes. But I can't, the state won't let me do that. Okay. So these rooms are open, but the residents are using them at their own risk. What about on the federal side where they want it? It's just the elderly people that were using it as far as puzzles, but they don't have a, a table. It, and, it's, it's for the elderly. And the thing is, we can put the table back, but it's not for... Right. I mean, other people, you know, the post, post office, mailman, they use it, whatever. It's not meant for that. But they do and have for years. So it's like... We can turn around and put tables back in there, but the same thing is going to, you have no idea who's playing with the puzzle pieces. You just don't know. Do, do you know what I'm saying? Yes. Was it a great idea prior to COVID? Yeah, my mother even would go in periodically and, and do the puzzle because you really don't have room for puzzles in your apartment. But if somebody were to get sick, because somebody with a runny nose, I don't even know how it's, contracted at this point. Do you, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Somebody with a runny nose is playing with the puzzle pieces and then all of a sudden there's an outbreak in the back of John Village because of snotty pieces <laughs> everywhere. Right? Yeah. It is what it is. So is it a good idea, Rosie? Yes, it is. And we can put, certainly put the tables back, but we can't be responsible for no. wiping down the... You know what I'm saying? I'll wipe it. <laughs> I don't do puzzles. Can you but put an enter at your own risk sign up? Well, that's kind of unwelcoming, but we can mm -hmm. we can post well, it's, that it is open, but that it is yes. your own responsibility. Yeah, yeah we can certainly do that. We did. That said, that said, uh, use it your own risk. We did put our way. Oh, okay. What I knew. Must have been on a vacation day. <laughs> 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 but, but the community room and the, the residents contacted the congressman, and the congressman co contacted the state, and it ended up that ended up being a big deal. But these are the reasons why we held back. Okay, it's not yep. that we didn't want them using the community room, but it's just that I didn't want anybody to get sick. Decent, safe, and sanitary is our mission statement. Safe and sanitary were issues, you know? But we can certainly put the table back, Rosie, but it's going to be next week after inspection. Oh, oh, yeah. and then, then we had a problem with the laundry room, people stealing the paper towels, people stealing the toilet paper. That's been a long time. I know. It's like 16 years ago, like, there was a laundry room. We found out who because yes. we labeled yes. the toilet. Oh, <laughs> we labeled oh, the toilet paper housing oh, yeah. the inside, and sure enough, <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, my but I mean, <laughs> how petty is that? I mean, if you needed the roll of toilet oh, paper, just call the office. We'll give you some. It's not like we don't have it, but you don't have to resort to stealing it. And then somebody goes in to they use it, and there's nothing. But they get more. Well, and this is it. But this is what we're dealing with, theft of essentials. Yes, that's right. There you go. Right? Yeah. And the same thing with any place that has a refrigerator. Do we really want people storing, like, cream and, and milk in the refrigerator because they leave it? And then if it goes bad, we're, we're not going to be going around checking the dates on people's things. Absolutely not. I mean... I just drank a chocolate milk that I had purchased that was dated like the 23rd of November, and it was the 28th. And I, I bought two. I looked at the date on one, the date was perfectly fine. I didn't look on the date on the other, assuming the date was fine, it was not. And I let everybody I knew that if I get really sick, it's because of this. Yes. <laughs> yes. Because you just don't know. 
You know, you have to check everything today. You cannot assume that the things that you use in a safe, because of the supply chain issues, whatever the hell else is going on, the lack of health, checking the sell by dates, but it's little things. And same thing with our refrigerators. No. Just can't do it. And it's not like we don't want to, but we can't. Because we can't guarantee that what they're using is going to still be there because we have toilet paper, paper towel nappers. <laughs> Who's to say they're not going to be stealing the stuff out of the refrigerator? Oh, yeah. Do you, do you know what I mean? And that's not part of our mission statement. No. Right? Right. And I've been a little out of control lately. And I'm trying to, we've got balancing acts going on. We've got people that are sick with COVID, elderly people that are sick, and we're trying to comfort them as much as we possibly can, calling, you know, but if they don't tell us, we, we don't, don't know. know. Yeah. But the people that have, it's either cards or flowers or whatever, you know, we're just trying to, because a lot of these people don't have a lot of people in their life. They just have us. And even though it is independent living, they're our family. Right? Right. And that's the way they look at it. And a lot of, a lot of things that we do, like the state says, well, you really don't have the money for that. And you really don't have the money for this. And questioning our parties. And it's like, you know what? These people are our family. And if that's the only Christmas or only Christmas present they're going to get, let's talk about our projects where the state came in and decided they're going to manage our projects. Well, the roofing situation at Packachog Village, they didn't bother to come out and look at our roofs at Packachog Village in the front. They turned around, drew up the specs, only to find out that the soffits weren't long enough to support the new roof. Mm -hmm. So to a tune of an extra $100,000 was a change order. We had to extend the soffits before they could put the shingles on the roof. Now these are experts, mm -hmm. right? So I'm assuming they know what the hell they're doing. Well, you can't assume anything in this day and age. They never came out and looked at the roofs to see whether the roof would actually so support that. Then we get money for this big sustainability, weatherization, and something else. So I'm talking to the architect, and he says to me, well, you know, we really should have done the sustainability thing prior to the roofs. Like, in other words, they should have weatherized yeah. underneath before they put the new roof on. I'm thinking to myself, well, the state knew that we were getting the sustainability grant, but they never talked to anybody else about the new roof. So, so it's like something that should have been done prior to the roofs. Now they're trying to figure out how they're going to fix it. They gave us hundreds, thousands of like six hundred thousand dollars to weatherize our property, the state property. But it's like one hand doesn't know what the other hand is doing. Mm -hmm. That's the and it's problem. like the grants are coming out backed up. So it's like now last week, I mean the guy was very nice. I said, you know what? We're wasting money. Not our fault, but you are voting for all these adjustments because of things they've screwed up. Here's another example. Stove vent hoods. We were gonna rent, we were gonna replace all the vent hoods. We had bisque stoves. So we wanted bisque vent hoods because we didn't want it to look tacky by putting a white one with an off-white stove. I mean, I wouldn't want that in my house. So they couldn't get, they couldn't get the off-white vent hoods. So that project got canceled. But that was after we'd already spent money on a designer, on an architect. All required things. All mm -hmm. required things for procurement and all screwed up. They had a vendor. Then they find out they can't get the vent hoods. So the vent hoods, I'm going to write up how much money was spent and what the resolution to that project was. Not on us. 
Right. Then the stoves. Here's another beauty. We um, have been working with a vendor that we purchase our stoves for what, as we need them. If the stove craps out, we turn around and new one. Well, they turned around and the state looked at three stoves, got measurements, and they ordered enough stoves, 57 stoves, to cover the whole front of Pakichog Village. They ordered a 24-inch stove, all of them, 24 inches. We only have ordered 20-inch stoves. So all the stoves that were ordered are now too big. They do not fit in the apartments. So designer, architect fees, the vendor ordered the stoves, not realizing, uh, hello, you provide us with stoves. If you had thought about it, maybe you could have told us that these stoves are too big, but they didn't. They ordered what was requested by the state. The stoves don't fit. So now, in order to make them fit, they'd actually have to cut the countertops? Absolutely not. No. We're not doing that. So the stoves are all going to get shipped back. And we have to pay a restocking fee, re-wrapping fee, 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 for nothing. Not our fault. Figured they knew what they were doing. Of course, all the vacation time I took, all these things are going on. And it's like, okay, so there's money lost there. Now, this is their money that they've given to us as a grant. It wasn't our money. It didn't come out of our budget, except for the uh, The only thing that may have come out of the budget is the soccer thing. But it's like they give you this grant. They assign these people to do the work. They expect you to vote and me to sign off, because they can't sign for it. That's our piece. You vote based upon what I present to you. I sign it. because based upon what they presented to me and what you voted on, it had screwed up. Not on our end, but on their end. But then when you question them, it's like, how dare you? I've been doing this for 40 years. So my question in days are over. Everything's gonna be put in writing, and I'll be sure to send a copy to our friend, Ben Stone. It's like, you know what, our projects are all messed up. It's like you, you go and do sidewalks, and it's like, and then all of a sudden you see a hole in the sidewalk. It's like, what the hell is this? It's a brand new sidewalk. But there's issues with, it seems like with everything that comes down, windows, this is another thing. They wanted to know why I bought windows for a building, and I stored them in the community room. Well, tenant complained to the Board of Health that her windows weren't good. The Board of Health puts us as a finding that I have to replace those windows immediately. So we turned around and we ordered windows because it was a sole. We've been using heritage windows since 2010. The board voted at that time to do a sole source proprietor so that we wouldn't have 15 different window venues on our properties. We were going to use the same window, American made window for all the different developments, so that we wouldn't have different manufacturers, different parts. We don't have the storage for any of this, and we, there was no need. So we use heritage wholesalers for all our windows. Well, all of a sudden they decide, well, we're gonna take over the windows for that building that I already purchased. So I'm storing windows for that building. We can use anywhere else. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The windows can be used in other apartments in the state. Like say somebody breaks a window, we have a window to replace it with immediately. Now the, want, now the state wants to know why I purchased those windows. So now I'm gonna go back through and say, well, you know, the Board of Health gave us a finding, told us to fix this, blah, blah, blah. This is months later. So then they took it on as a big project. Something that should have taken maybe a week. Oh, I have COVID, you can't come in. Mm -hmm. So the resident that was actually complaining just got brand new windows, but this probably happened months ago. So it's like now I've got to explain 
why I did what I did, which I have an answer for, and if they like it, they don't, whatever. I'm responding to the Board of Health. Well, if the Board of Health tells me I need to do something, I'm going to do it. That's the bottom line. But now we have to go and call this guy up, and he's like, are you not calling me back because you don't want to explain about the windows? I'm like, who the hell does this guy think he is? You don't. Really? I'm in the emergency room. I'm not calling you back because I'm not able to answer your question. People have things going on. Yeah. And don't assume anything, you long-time state employee. This is the thing. They're all looking for something wrong. And they're, they've got a very short fuse. And they're making assumptions based upon their end but they're assuming without verifying. Do you know what I mean? Yep. And it's getting old. It's really getting old. But we're not hiding anything. We're doing the absolute best. We have an answer for everything everybody's asking us. I mean, do we know the windows are a problem at Pack Chalk Village? Absolutely. The maintenance guys have replaced them. It's like, why are we hiring architects and designers? All that does is it seems to be the same people that they're using, so I don't understand that. Same architects, same designers, really? Where's the competition? I mean, are these people like the low bid every single time? It, it just, I don't know. That I'm questioning. But I, I, I don't want to start a firestorm until I have the answers. But this guy, this guy started the fire, and I'm going to blow it away. Yes. Just saying. So if I lose my job, I work for you. I don't work for the state. I don't work for the federal government. I work for you. I'm just letting you know the fuse. Give me the pay raise. No, that's that's not even that's not even an issue. We're, we're going to do the budget at the next meeting, but we're, I'm going to start sending this stuff back their way so that they get the idea that enough is enough. You know? Do you understand yep. what I'm saying to you? Yes. And if they don't like the way that I'm acting, then I can prove everything I'm saying. And we're not going to be targeted by them. I'm not going to be targeted by them. Auburn Housing Authority is not going to be targeted by them. We're doing the best we can with what we have. If we're doing something wrong, all they do, tell us, and we'll fix it as soon as we can. But we have people passing away. We have people moving out. We have inspections. We have all this stuff going on. And with what we have for help, we're doing the best that we possibly can do. Like even Betty, it's like, you got to prioritize, you know, we have to prioritize what we're prioritize what we're doing. And like so I said, I, I really feel that I, I, I think I have the, the vote of the board for this. You can tell me you don't. But I think this office has been running extremely well under terrible circumstances. And anything that gets found, like, we're going to turn around in COVID. It's like getting somebody to come in and do the work, getting the materials that you need to be in compliance, right. like emergency batteries. It's We're struggling to get batteries now, but you need to have emergency lights in the hallways, but what do you do if you can't get a battery? Do, do you know what I mean? So it's borrowing from Peter to, to pay Paul, but we'll do the best we possibly can and just go from there. And we are gonna, we gotta figure out when you actually want these board meetings. We're supposed to have the same date, you know, pick a day in the month, and that's when, a, that's when the board meetings are going to be. Not, I can't make it this day, can we do another day? We have to have the day, and I'm going to go in and update it in the system, and if people can't make it, as long as we have a quorum, we're going to hold the meeting. Mm -hmm. No more, I can't be here, we're not going to pull, Pick a date, and we're gonna because we're gonna need to have another meeting in December. We're gonna have it at the beginning of December because we need to do the budget. 
and so <clears throat> get that going. We didn't have to do a budget revision, so I'm assuming because we didn't that we're in we're in good shape budget wise. I haven't heard anything different. Okay. Yep. So that's all I have. You sure? If not, at the bottom of them toes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you, Larry. Um, do we have any members' items? I don't know. Just wondering if, I don't know if this is, should do that. Can we get a light for that uh, in the front of the sign? There used to be, when I moved in there, they had a light at the sign so people could see it. Cause I can't, I can't see if there was a light, the wiring would be there. Yeah, there was a light. That was a long time ago. That was six yeah. years ago. Okay. The, the wiring should still be in the ground. It should be. Yeah. Okay. To light up the sign. Yep. Definitely. That won't happen this week. No. <laughs> Just saying. That's quite. Right. <laughs> yep. Anything else? Anybody got anything else? Just a set a date for the next meeting. No, wait. Right. So when do you want to set a date for the budget meeting? Well, it would be good if it was the beginning of December because if there's any corrections, we still have time to meet. Okay. It used to be the first Tuesday of the month. I cannot make the first Tuesday of the month any time because I have a scheduled meeting or a church meeting. On Monday is tough for the office. I can make it the afternoon, but I can't make it on the no. How about uh, Wednesday? How about Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock? First Wednesday of the month. Sounds good. That would be the seventh. So going forward now, I'm going to put it in the system under board attendance that our meetings, Alice, our meetings are going to be the first Wednesday, Wednesday of every month yeah. at 10 a.m. Okay? So you know that okay. unless we have a special meeting, that's when our regular meeting is going to be. Okay? Yep. Mm -hmm. That's it. Any public comment? None? Adjournment. I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None.